Hello YouTube, I am the person with many aliases and as you can see I am playing Dragon's Crown by uh, Vanilla VanillaWare I believe. I got this copy a couple of days early and it will be probably like day after tomorrow before it arrives everywhere else in the west for <coughs> and so I, I don't think it's really useful for to have a walk through but since I have this game and since I have a few days I decided to record it a little bit and maybe share some tips I've picked up over playing this for a little while. I'm not going to teach you about combat or any of that stuff because you pick that up in the tutorial pretty fast but I'm going to pick uh, share with you a couple of things I figured out over, over the course of gaming for a few, a few hours and as you can see I picked the Amazon which it was uh, I was thinking of playing a fighter initially but and I was just going to pick an Amazon just to try the game out but before I knew it I sort of uh, the game, this game st story got ahead and I couldn't really just put the game down by that point. So whatever. Anyways, uh, I'm starting with the most interesting part of the game, the dungeon crawling, and afterwards I'll take you around the town and show you a few things I know, uh, introduce you f to the people. Anyways, uh, this being an arcade, this is an arcade style fighter, so, but the difference is, um, if you move the right stick, you have this cursor that moves around, and this is important because this is basically uh, it, how how you instruct uh, your thief character here to pick up things, and also um, you can you can poke around in the background and you can find things that are hidden there. As you can see, it's stuck here. Uh, you you interact with the background using L1 and you see these blinking things? These are um, treasure hidden in the background. This is very important because you know, even as long as you're in this map, uh, like even after you kill everybody, you can spend like take time just um, grabbing things. So I press L1, a uh, bit of extra treasure, 200 points, 20 points. Now this is important because um, every time you kill an enemy or pick up treasure, it all goes towards the score, and the score is important because. At the end of a dungeon crawl, um, every all the points you pick up is translated into experience, which of course translates to uh, leveling up your characters. So having as much points as possible is important, you know. Just so always have your so just keep your cursor moving around looking for treasure, and just it's never um, hidden like. Well, I w it wouldn't be hidden in the middle of a pillar, but it would be hidden on top of the floor, stuff like that. So it's not entirely uh, Ill illogical, but you know, keep you know, keep your eyes open for anything blinking. These, uh, I try to move, my, these guys you are CPU fighters. Uh, the, the, this right here is a rune. Um, you see them all over the background. At the beginning of the game, you won't be able to use them, but um, about or maybe like a third of the game way into the game, you you start be able to use them. So if you see them, don't worry about them. The game will teach you to use them eventually. And I don't want to give away too much, so I just start keep moving along. The fairy is telling me to move, so just keep you no, know, just keep the right cursor going. You know, just sort of keep poking around. See, You're just hidden all over the place. And just a bit of combat. If you don't have um, CP, if you don't have human players in your party, um, if you eventually you'll as eventually you do, um, you'll get a mechanic that allows you to add CPU adventurers. The, the little problem is that you can't o you can't adventure alone. Um, you always have have these guys dropping in if you don't have a party set up beforehand. So if you want to adventure alone, like the only real option is to um, go a bit out of your way to like empty a, a slot that I'll introduce later to you, and then you know then there'll be nobody left to join you, and then you'd have to start over again with um, collecting NPCs. So it's a little bit inconvenient, but you know this being a multi a cooperative game, it always helps to have party members. Um, as you can see, the cursors. Um, 
a picture of a key. And again, this being sort of like a pen, like if this were a pen and paper RPG translated video game, this cursor would basically be saying, you order your thief to unlock this chest. Yes. Done. Points. Tre treasure rank D is basically indicates um, uh, the rank of your pickups. Like you get equipment and armor from these chests. So, yeah. You you see later. You can see at the end of a quest like of what you picked up. More treasure. Also pay attention if the blinking icon, if the blinking treasure spark mm -hmm. thing keeps uh, sparkling for a few seconds, then try mash L1. I'll, sh uh, I'll sort of, I'll sort of demonstrate. You know, say there's like a treasure here, keeps blinking. You mash L1. As much as possible, it'll drop a lot of treasure. So you know, keep an eye on it. Uh, and it's hidden all over the place. See, oh, see, good example. It's kind of hard to see, but you uh, mashed L1, tons of treasure. And this is important. Always keep looking for treasure. The more treasure you find, the more points you get. More points you get, um, the more experience you get per dungeon crawl. Uh, pick up a boat. Uh, and you can pick up weapons with the triangle button. And just and there will be darkness in this game, but oh, this is oh, these are ghosts. So you just sort of walk. Them. The game, uh, the game explains to you later, but you know it's kind of obvious. Fire is super effective. Also, you can drop drop items with the torch. Well, drop items with the tri triangle. You can use L1 and click on it. You can order teammates to pick it up. Or N NPC teammates, CPU teammates. Yep, see, there you go. So you don't have to worry about, you know, babysitting them being it's the awesome. only intelligent person. Voila. More treasure. Anyways, again, like, it's all painted background, but remember that, like, the, the devs just are hiding treasure everywhere. Now, this here is a skeleton. Just this is where you, this is the mechanic by which you recruit uh, future NPCs. So just keep so pick them up as much as possible. The sorceress can use them to to summon uh, a uh, helpers, but oh, teammate dead. This is it's a bit confusing. The, uh, dang, I can I can hardly see it with, with this HD crap. Ah. Oh, I died too. It's a bit confusing. There's a little bit of chaos. Because of so much art, it's just difficult to see sometimes. Uh, you, I mean, totally team wiped out. You can dr you can lose your main weapon, and when you do, you know you have to wait a couple of minutes for the cooldown on before you can pick it up again. Sort of. I did that with the circle button. And we can see that cross is slowly draining when you can pick it up again later. Always look for treasure. See, mashing it, lots of lots of drops. Uh just, you know, find stuff. Let's see. Oh yeah. You'll be picking up a lot of stuff along the way, so just, you know, don't worry about it. Anyways. Even if you see the exit, you know, you can spend a few seconds after clearing out the current room just looking for, well, if there's any blinking lights, basically. So, more points, more experience. So just, you know, you get experience by beating people up and collecting shiny things. Food? You get food, yeah. And if food is sort of like a passive health regen, if you keep eating, you can uh, uh, restore about uh, plus, well, plus beyond your maximum health. But don't worry, you know, like um, it's not really. Like, don't really worry about saving your food. Just you have health potions, and use them when you're about to die, and that's it. This is just for you know boosting your max health. And. And once, and don't worry about like overeating either or anything like that. Like what, if there's a situation where like you ha you eat enough food that your your extra health maxes out, you you automatically oh, stop that. eating f 
food and you store a little bit. See, I still have, have one food left or something like that. And also, there's a blinking light, but you can still select it behind your teammates. So, oh, yeah. Just keep. No. What? Ah. I heard that the, uh, the Kamatani, the, the developer. Oh wait, this is important. If you if you have no weapon, if you're disarmed for the second, just you can still attack. So you know, don't worry. You're not helpless, but you know, it still helps to have you know the thing that you level up and buy and all that. Uh, and another thing is treasure rooms. So you know, pay attention. Most. Most of the rooms you have to ask your thief to pick, but this one, you know, is just sort of well hidden, so just go in and you can grab extra stuff. There's always, like, traps or enemies, in this case, it's respawning demons, so. It can get a little bit confusing, so it's important. So when you create a character, you can select the cutter. So I always advise, you no, know, try and get collect a character. Oh, thief! Yeah, these guys can steal your chat, your treasure. So you know, it takes a while to beat up, but you know, always make sure you go down here. Saying, you know, don't pick a generic cutter. Don't pick a generic cutter. Make pick a character that you can recognize. Because you know there'll be a lot of chaos. And even with and even with, you know, like a red circle and a cursor above your head with so much stuff going on, you know, you just have a hard time seeing anything. Your thief can also pick up a uh, treasure for you, so you know, don't worry. It's my turn. Simple. You know, collectible weapons. Yes. And Kamatani said that this game was spa is a spiritual successor of an earlier production of Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom, which also had similar treasure rooms hidden in the background. So, you know, just always look for these doors, you know, they always lead back. Oh, yeah, another tricky thing about this game is that once you start dungeon crawl, you can never backtrack. So, you know, this is to make sure that, you know, you don't, like, over-scour a room, but once you enter a new room, like, um, you can't go back. So, if you, so make sure that you get what you want the first time, otherwise you have to restart the crawl. And, uh, I remember in, uh, early in the game, there's a quest that required a side room by accidentally back oh out. My. And I didn't realize that you could go back in back then, so I had to restart the quest. So you know, make sure that you grab everything, search everywhere, and re and this this cursor icon is your friend. It's my turn. You know, always look around the back. I can't stress this enough. The more extra points you get, the more extra points you get. Like quite seriously, you know, the easier it would be to level up. So, you know, like you tell your GM, I look above the into the uh, underneath the statue, and GM tells you, oh, you found a gold coin, so on and so forth. I'll tell you more about NPC recruitment later. But as always, you know, these guys are quite reliable. But you know, there will be. But if you have to protect somebody, that's another matter. You know, everybody has, I think, I'll probably just hang around to explain a little bit more. Everybody has a set number of lives, just like an arcade game. Um, if, if they die and run out of lives, you know, um, there's an opportunity to revive them, but you have to pay money, and you can do that by just clicking on their heads when they're dead, after while they count down. And it'll cost more every time they die. On the other hand, if you score high enough, um, you'll be able to extend your life by one. So, again, you know, do well, score well, find a lot of treasure, and it should be pretty easy. I'm not sure how much farther I should go. I think I should probably um, exit by now because I don't want to spoil any bosses or anything like that. Now, this is a an, a thing I should tell you because once you start dungeon crawling, 
you can't pause. You can see they're still moving. I also use the PS button. They're still moving. This game does not stop if you're dungeon crawling. This is to make sure that you keep on going and you don't just get away and forget about the game while you're eating lunch or something. The enemies will keep moving, so just um, keep on going. Now this is Quit the Adventure. This is important because, um, of course it says Quit the Adventure, but um, when, it, when you click this, there is no repercussion, uh, no penalty for stopping where you are. Like you, um, it's not like a uh, monster hunter or something like that where you know you, you pay a penalty for you failing a quest or something like that or like um, copping out at the end. And this is uh, important as I said because if, if dungeon crawls these long, sometimes when you have sub quests, they're hidden in just very specific rooms and you, like once you and once you find the objective of your sub quest, it's already considered completed. You don't have to reach the end of the stage and beat the boss and c to consider it completed. Once you complete the objective of the sub quest, you can just simply quit the adventure and it'll still uh, call it in as successful. So let's just say quit the adventure for now. Don't worry, no penalty at all. You just leave. This is the, the, the post game debrief, post dungeon crawl debriefing. Uh, I'm level 19, so I'm doing pretty well. Again, everything, um, your score is converted and, well, based on difficulty, so an extra 10%, so you, it all goes into experience. This is why I'm important. Uh, next, this is, like, even in, in like a half, ha halfway dungeon crawl, you just pick up random treasure. It's all graded, so, you know, uh, as you can see, you don't know what they are right now. But you can you, if you, you can um, appraise them right now or go back to the uh, appropriate shop have them appraised there or you can sell them as is but if you praise if you appraise them first it, um, the sell price will be higher but it won't or it won't uh, like completely offset the initial appraise I'm guessing that this 1000 appraise price if I did it would probably be about 600 so you still lose 400 in general luckily you know the rate you're selling stuff it wouldn't matter but you know uh, well you see this you know I can't use this you can just get rid of it you know you make it a little bit of mint and this one this item is level 20 so it's above me but so you know some people would say you know hang on to it until you level up you know I say don't worry about it if you can't use it right now just get rid of it and get, get yourself some money and you can you know, like, like, if you just go through this just leveling up as you play the game you know there will be always another weapon that will be just as good so uh, I would advise you know just checking I praise these no, just to make sure, you know. I think I'm not sure how high my defense is, but 19 is pretty high, so you probably want to keep these. Uh, level 16. Also, I'm about level 20. I remember. I can't really check right now, but you no. Know, also, don't worry about items that are below your level. If you if it's below your level, don't bother keeping it. You know, just constantly keep up with your with your weapon level. Your attack will be constantly upgrading. So you know, uh, I would. The closest analog in my gaming history would be like probably Borderlands, where they just throw guns at you all the time. Same here, you know, you collect all your equipment and rewards after every dungeon crawl, and there will be so many of them, you just, you know, take what you want, leave the rest behind. You know, don't worry about over level or under level. You know, if it's pretty, you just, <laughs> just take it, you know, and sell the rest. So, you can press X to obtain all and quit, or press triangle to sell all and quit. So you know, if you're dun dungeon crawling for grinding points and you don't want the rewards, you can get rid of them or just keep them all. Uh, I'm now I've returned to town, I believe. Wait a second. Loading. The books you borrowed from the hermit are packed with research about the ancient dragon. 
Have Liu Kang look at them. Uh, that was Below's narrator, so he always, you know, keeps you on track for the main story quests. But that's not important right now. What's important right now is showing you around town. I show you the, them one at a time. Press select, and you can show your current location. There are a few places you can go to. Dragon's ha Haven Inn. This is where you um, uh, or organize your party, party and save and quit. Canaan Tempo is where you recruit, basically start recruiting um, uh, dead party members and resurrecting them. This is your main shop, the only shop you need. You know, they just crammed everything you require. You know, you can buy, sell, appraise, and you know, just right there. And you don't need anything else. Item, basically all your consumable health items are here. This is a uh, magic item. So this is where you buy one-off magic attacks, you know, like magic scrolls. Basically, you know, disposable nukes. And well, there's also this is also where you learn about rune the rune system. But you know, again, the game instructs you, so I don't really need to tell you ahead of time. You can just save yourself the trouble. This is where you learn skills and accept quests. Yes, you know, uh, this is basically where you uh, level yourself up with the skill points that you get. Uh, you get about like one you get one skill point for every level, and that goes into uh, passives and special attacks which are separate from your stats. <clears throat> the castle is basically where all the plot stuff happens so you only really need to go there when the story asks you to. Stables come later, you won't be able to access them at the beginning of the game and I'll leave the surprise for you. And, this, and the gate is basically where you begin your adventures initially. I believe this is where you also start your multiplayer lobbies. When you, you get to the room, once you get to the room, you just um, uh, just uh, start looking online for open open games. Anyways, yeah, Amazon. I should have picked the fighter, but no. Uh, I guess. Bleh. What troubles you, my child? Anyways, this is the temple. So this pray. Very, you know, there's praying gives you passive uh, uh, blessings. They, they're called blessings, but I don't really call, know what the, the general RPG term is. But you know, this is just you know, increase your your rates or luck stuff like that. Tells you all the stuff. Uh, you know, it's not a big deal. Just pick one if you want one, but it's not a huge deal. Pretty cheap too. Now, resurrect. This is your main. Uh, party recruitment for NPCs. As I said, throughout the game you'll be collecting bones of dead people. So you'll be fine. You know, this is so you, for a donation or just pay money. You know you can unlock uh, new party members because this is important because uh, your NPCs that you collect they won't level up with you. So if you want to keep your party members uh, keeping up with you, just you have to. Uh, keep finding high level, like next level party members. I don't. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with this resolution. I'm using composite cables for recording. But anyways, let's just, for example, just recruit these two. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. So yeah, recruited. So this is basically your recruitment system. Uh, resurrect any. You can skip this. Recruited. Now again, like this. So you know you have all these other guys, and just, I don't really want them. You know, so you, know, you don't want this to just overfill your, overfill your. You know bone supply or whatever. So then you have the burial mechanic. Usually I just, you know, you just get rid of them all, you know. I just you do this to clear my stock. You know, don't worry about, don't feel bad. There'll be more dead people along the way. May they rest in peace. You know, there's enough dead people in the world. <laughs> Something like that. Anyways, the extra mechanic for burial is that if you bury so many at any, at any time, uh, you'll get a temporary, you'll get a, be rewarded a small item, like a healing potion or an explosive or an unrepairable accessory. 
So, not entirely useful, but you know, it's just a good thing to keep and then the burial is going, you know. <clears throat> Sorry, just talking to one of my friends. So, that's about it. Uh, th so, basically your main recruitment system. The other half of the recruitment system the books you borrowed is in from the, the hermit. Inn. I'll show you this quickly because th these two together basically control. This is the same mechanic. These two together, you basically uh, set your party. So let's see. As you can see, um, my new s wizard is one level higher than the one I currently have. And the thing is that if you go into adventures just randomly. Um, they'll just like pluck NPCs out of a hat and just drop them into your party. So if they're over, if they're too underleveled, you know you don't want to have the you know fight the giant demon of destruction or whatever and have this level three guy just suddenly appear because you forgot to get rid of him when you're waiting for your level two hundred guy to, to save the day. So that would put a crooked crick in your neck, uh, ruin your day. So uh, square is part ways, and this is you get rid of your party members that you know you don't want. So basically, don't worry about the names, don't worry about the items. What level? What Im what's important to me is the levels. Just treat them as the same six classes, and as you find bones, always make sure that the next class is leveled up. So you know. You can just fit, you know, put guys in you know, stuff. Well, or square again uh, removes them from your current adventure party. So uh, this is your main creation system, but uh, you can just sort of s store new characters here. I haven't really messed around with it yet because I'm just uh, you know, at this point of game, my Amazon's doing pretty well. And want to just start fresh for no you know for no reason you can alter names alter the character color um, palette swap so on and so forth there aren't so many palettes the but books you, you know, borrowed from the hermit just pick are packed the one that works about the and make sure it's, make sure it's noticeable that. enough that you can just just you know be able to spot them in the fight as best you can because the camera keeps moving back and forth so it'll be a little bit hard to see uh, cursor again, it's not very really useful here, but you know, just game make sure that it's always on hand. You can click on yourself to open the start menu. This is your menu, but uh, no, I don't really need to show this to you. I need to check my. See, uh, I am. I have higher item, higher defense items. Cannot. See, this was a reward item from Burio, so as you can see, cannot repair. So it's just you know, and th at the rate you collect the treasure, the next item will always have a higher, higher defense level and stuff like that. So you know, for me, the important part is always making sure that your um, damage levels keep up to the game. So these little things, just pick, pick what you want. You know, what was it? See, this is pretty good, so, uh, level 18. Yeah, I might as well trade this out. The, the, the weapon grade is mostly just to tell you, like, how many extra little buffs the equipment gives you. So, you know, Ancient Ring. This is one bag, and your bag also stores your equipment. So, you know, you have to always trade, you know, do you want more defense for less items or you want more items for less defense? I'm not sure, but I believe you can only tr uh, carry uh, one <coughs> one weapon at any, any given time, but uh, maybe I haven't explored too much. Anyways, uh, this is mostly the main, the setting your equipment is the most important part. Anyways, magic shop. I'll show you the magic shop. What do you mean? Yeah, this is basically half the reason you visit. <laughs> uh, what would you like? Uh, now, I have to tell you about items. How Dragon's Crown treats items is um, by 
use, as you can see in, on the side, uses per dungeon and restock amount. So in this game, you don't buy items individually, you, I, you buy them in packs. So if you buy uh, Heal Potion S, the most expensive, the reason it's the most expensive is because you can use them the most time, seven times per one dungeon crawl. And, but, and after you use them up or you use them so many times, like after you finish a dungeon crawl, the restock amount is the pool of um, extra potions that will feed back and replenish your uses per dungeon. So once you run out of restock amount, that's when you empty your items. And you can buy, you know, one seven, one times seven or one times six set. So, and so this will be considered like one packet in your item bag. So you don't need to buy too many, you know, like f you'll be carrying 14, you'll be buying 14 at a time for this one. So, you know, just get, get one every once in a while, make sure you don't run out. I made that mistake and I have like a bunch of healing potions hanging around. But, you know, it gives me a, li a little bit of backup. You know, I, you know, save me some money in the long run, I guess. But, well, sell items, sell items, you know. Like I said, don't be afraid to get rid of stuff you don't want, you know. Once you're oh, under level, blah blah blah. I mean, like, you, at the rate you level up, you basically level up like, you know, once per dun once per story mission so you know if you keep going you know you just you know you're quickly outstrips outstrip their weapons and armor so you just you know you know don't need it don't need it just keep looking don't need it don't need it now just hang on to these for now uh appraise items what would you again like? th if you didn't appraise your items when you finished the dungeon you can take your stuff back here uh, have them appraised here no repair Which equipment. One do you want? This is mostly at the very end when you have like the stuff you want. Otherwise, you know, like for a fee, you can repair the durability, set it back to the original amount. But as I said, you know, like w at the rate your character levels per the story, you won't be needing uh, to repair your items for a long time because you just be constantly getting new items, throwing the old one away. Stuff like that. Uh, where was I? S what would you like? There's something on my mind. Which one do you want? Is about. Uh, this is this is gonna be such a great distraction joke when this comes up. Oh, I was distracted. <sighs> but whatever. The books you borrowed from the hermit are packed with research about the ancient dragon. Lucane's tower. Well, I might as well show you. I don't use it very much. Immediately, you and Lucane pour through the books on the ancient dragon. Oh, it wait. It is tough reading. Lucane summarizes for you. The illusionary lands are a great land where the ancient dragon is sealed, along with Alicia's fortress. It is an immortal dragon, born alongside the deities. The goddess fossilized it and made it sleep for time indefinite. This is so pen and paper, All the right? tomes seem to corroborate that general idea, but a particular line in one of the books jumps out at you. When the current Elysian king is sacrificed, the spell will be broken, and the ancient dragon will rise from its slumber. The memory of your meeting with the late king pops into your mind. He spoke of preventing himself from being sacrificed. Kingdom's safety this does one. not appear to be a given anymore. You speed to the castle, hoping against hope that he's there. I apologize. How can I help you? I forgot entirely that. <laughs> yeah, this is the tricky thing sometimes. But again, Which one? just wipe that from your mind. Just pretend that you didn't hear it. I'm sure it'll be out of context for a long time. I hope, or whatever. You know. Kazundai, Kazundai, Kazundai. Whatever. Try it and forget it. Forget. The important part is items. Right now, these are one off uh, spells. So, again, you know, like you can buy these and you can just shoot lightning or fire or heal yourself. You know, I could use this later. But again, you know, I don't use this entirely myself because I'm just. 
you know, this is a single player right now, and like characters, just you know, a bruiser. So I just, you know, I'm not big on this rune magic. I'm gonna show you later. Man. This is a mechanic we'll teach you later. I know. Frantically, your mind offers myriad silent prayers to any deity you've ever heard of. You rush to meet King Dean. Anyways, that would be in the castle, so that's where the story usually proceeds. So, you know, you can hold that back on that. Hmm. You're back. Yeah, this is the Adventurer's Guild, where you learn your quest, where, um, you pick up side quests. And, it's not, nice. well, the important part is that you always get skill points out of this, and treasure art, you know, where a little side bonus. But, the, you know, side quests, you know, everybody loves side quests. But I, like I said again, side quests, uh, you don't have to f play through the end of a dungeon to complete them, to have them kind of complete it. Once you fulfill the objective, you can immediately leave and the, and the side quests will be tabulated separately and considered completed. And you can just come back here ha um, and cash them in for the rewards. This is, well, obviously, this is where you learn stuff. As you can see, it's broken up into, into uh, sh skills shared between everybody, and skills was used by individual par characters. Uh, so, uh, the, given how the game is built, you know, you can have only s so many skill points at any given time. So I personally would advise leveling up individual skills was to the max and have, you know, pick the ones you want. Like me, I don't really need a slide attack. You know, so, you know, I don't as an Amazon, I'm always about running in and bashing them up. So, but uh, currently I've been leveling up uh money skills because you know the point the amount you pick up at any given time you know it's just important to have that little extra so as it you know and this one's important because you know again the, the the more score you get the more experience you get at the end so you know it all synergizes and uh you know like this is you have to get this later you know but Going to individual character skills again. I I should say like the game you would be you would be tempted to just sort of level up everything at once, but this is an RPG and um, characters have s I you know you, there are builds for characters I believe. So don't you know don't try too hard leveling up everything. Uh, I've been leveling up uh, berserk skills and adrenaline skills passives. So, you know, level 3 is very high right now. Uh, well, it goes 10 levels, but, you know, it takes a while to get everything. But, you know, you don't, don't spread out your points, you know, focus on what you want. And uh, I always believe in sticking to passives to enhance the inherent abilities of your character. Uh, I have a few, you know, set for uh, basic attacks that you can buy and these synergize with Berserk, the Amazon skill. Like again, like the Amazon for example like like given how these skills are broken down, like the, the game sort of subtly is encouraging you to have builds based on like certain skills. Was, so um, these two would be leveling up the Amazon's downward strike, so you know, built on crushing the enemy from above. This one. Did I get this? Yeah, strange. I should have. I thought I got this before. But whatever, this is important because the Amazon is such an aerial character, and the Berserk skill is based on number of hits, so you know, spinning attack, useful. Uh, this power smash, if a character, if you decide to build yourself on power smashing, uh, you know, the, the one strong attack plus melee afterwards, uh, this would be it. Parry. Now, I've been working on these two, uh, your basic uh, melee on the ground, 
rendered and so again all this you have to pick how you want your character to attack basically by depending on how you want to level up which attacks to be stronger so you know like any RPG character builds uh, you know make sh don't spread your points out I would say you know make your character really good at one thing and so you frantically know, mess your mind people, offers mess myriad up. silent prayers to any deity you've ever heard of you rush to meet King Dean. So again, the Amazon in this case is built around uh, constantly attacking and uh, air attacks and like speed up her speed up her her berserk rate. So that's why I've been focusing on either air attacks and ground combos. Uh, power smash is not so much, so on and so forth. So, this is basically a, uh, a simple primer for uh, the game that will be coming out in a day or two. I hope it's been useful. You know, I probably hasn't been anyways, but I hope that you know at least through my ramblings, I provided a little bit, and hopefully, I didn't spoil too much because I'm an idiot. But uh, just remember. To always look in the background for extra treasure. Your score is important. Your score will add to your experience. Like in any RPG, get rid of stuff you don't want. Remember your party recruitment system. Have fun and go apart. You know, adventure hard, I guess. So just enjoy the game when it comes out and, you know, pick a mail next time, guys. <laughs> I am sorry. So anyways, this is the person with many aliases with a few tips that I've learned through this game and hopefully if this, you know, your initial hours won't be so ex um, embarrassing when you fumble around, you know, figuring out how to find items in background and so on and so forth. So uh, take care of yourself and well, I'll see you when online when this, g when this game arrives.